The Free Syrian Army, an armed wing of the Syrian opposition, has claimed responsibility for two massive explosions in the city of Aleppo. The blasts have killed at least 25 and injured some 175. The explosions hit a military intelligence complex and a security force base. Aleppo, Syria's northern city, has been uh, relatively quiet since mass anti-government protests uh, started in March. The government claims it's fighting a foreign-funded insurgency and blamed terrorists for several bombings in the capital Damascus late last year. The violence has escalated in Syria since the past week, with opposition forces claiming Assad's forces are shelling several areas, including the flashpoint city of Oms. Activists are accusing the government of a massacre saying hundreds of civilians have been killed. Let's get more on the situation from journalist Lizzie Phelan, now joining us live from London. Now, thanks for coming on RT today. The Free Syrian Army now claiming responsibility for these enormous blasts in Syria today. Do you think there's any chance that could change NATO states' attitudes towards the armed opposition groups in the country? Well, I mean, I would say that this attack was directed from London, Tel Aviv, Paris and New York. It's quite clear that the explosions, I mean, the explosions themselves were huge. There, I've spoken to people in Aleppo today who are in fear for their lives. And there were people up to 20 kilometers away who felt the explosion. So let's look at the evidence for the, 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 the facts that this uh, attack was actually directed externally. Of course, it was carried out by uh, so-called Free Syrian Army insurgents. Um, but first of all, I'd just like to say that this attack is clearly a response uh, to the Russian and Chinese veto. It is a message from the West that if we don't get our way through the United Nations Security Council, we are going to go ahead with destabilizing the, the Syria by any means possible. So first of all, we've had uh, in, uh, in the first minutes after the explosion and, out, and half an hour or so, we had the Western uh, and GCC uh, media mooting the claim that the, the Syrian government was responsible for the attacks. But of course, it was uh, France, France 24 who broke the news uh, that the, the Colonel, Colonel Arif Hamoud uh, claimed responsibility for the attack. So, of course, we had William Hague uh, just a few days ago um, in the British media promising that Britain would support the Free Syrian Army by any means that they could. And of course, that means political support, financial support and military support. And it is no coincidence, I would say, that it, it seems to be always the French media that breaks the announcements by Free Syrian Army officers claiming responsibility for, for attacks. Of course, it was Le Figaro who uh, broke the announcement by Free Syrian Army officers uh, that they were responsible for the killing of France de journalists, Gilles Jacquet, and eight other Syrian civilians. So this indicates a very close uh, communication and frequent communication between the French media and the French. And the, and the opposition. And then, of course, just a few days ago as well, a, a video emerged online of uh, Israeli official Ayub Kara and Free Syrian Army officer Abu Bilal, where they were talking in much depth about how they could cooperate more closely. And then uh, at the same time, we are seeing in the media uh, 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 an increase in accusations of Syrian government violence against civilians in Homs. But since the military operation to protect civilians in Homs began, the Syrian military have f found a number of caches of weapons, of Israeli weapons, including Uzis and anti-tank -tank weapons. So the, we cannot separate the attack in Aleppo today that there are reports that more than 150 people have been killed. But so far, the Ministry of Health has only been able to identify 25 uh, bodies. This is because there are the explosions were so, so, so strong that there are literally pieces of, of people's bodies, of children's bodies strewn across the streets. Uh, and then the other evidence that this was uh, conducted by uh, uh, in external or, or facilitated by external intelligence is that, as you mentioned in your report, the attacks took place in very sensitive areas outside uh, military buildings and law enforcement agencies, where obviously there will be a very high level of security. So the, uh, Lizzie, the Lizzie, I, I'm terribly sorry to interrupt you. If I may just jump in just for a moment here. It, it, it's simply very, very interesting how, how you discuss that there are external players here that are creating a spinal column, a backbone. Uh, to 
help the armed opposition against the Assad regime. But um, as you talk about uh, these two enormous bombs going off in Aleppo, uh, the U.S. and its allies are, are looking into supporting the Syrian opposition, including arming the rebels and creating a, quote, humanitarian corridor. Would you say, some might say, this sounds suspiciously like that no-fly zone over Libya, according to U.N. Resolution 1973? Yes, well, absolutely. I mean, they can't, uh, they, they are, are unable to get the United Nations Security Council resolution to have uh, a Libya style uh, uh, UN fig leaf. For the, inter for the intervention. So, as we know, they are doing it through other means. And the, in the Israeli intelligence website, Debka, themselves reported just a couple of days ago that there were British and Qatari special forces already uh, on, on the ground in Syria. So, because of the Russians' determination to uphold international law and prevent uh, a violation of, uh, a direct violation of Syria's sovereignty and interference in their internal affairs, which is already Already taking place because of the, the West's uh, support for these insurgents on the ground, then the West, as I said, is going to try any means possible to destabilize the, 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 the country uh, uh, by not going through the United Nations. And let's be clear that the Russian stance of consistently and continuously reminding the world of its international ob obligations under international law is being continuously rubbished by the West, as we've seen in these explosions today, who are determined to violate uh, all, all, um, all of its responsibilities under international law in order to get its way in Syria, in order to destabilize the country so that it can, it can get hold of the, it, it can, uh, get hold of the, the geostrategic uh, um, area that is Syria so, so that it can uh, have a, 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 a strategic advantage in its later confrontations that it is pushing for with Russia and Iran. All right, uh, journalist uh, Lizzie Phelan. Wish we had more time for this. We don't. Uh, live from London, thank you.